Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Mobile Ads Garage, where we get into mobile ads code the way I get into pie eating contests, elbow deep. So last time out, we coded up a simple banner ad implementation. Today, we're gonna expand on that by talking about the best ways to use banners, where to put them, how they should behave, and how you can monetize while maintaining a great user experience. With me as always is Gary the Graphics Guy. I'm still a little mad I took the last slice of pizza at lunch, but we're ready to have some fun. We get a lot of questions on our forum and in person about ad mob policy. Things like, can I put my ad view in a list view? Or is it okay for this banner to be next to this UI button? We'll talk about those kind of specifics in a second. But first, I think it'll help if everybody understands why we have those policies in the first place, where they come from. So let's bring it in and have a serious moment. The main purpose of AdMob's policies regarding where to put ads and when to show them is to make sure that every ad impression, that means every time an ad is displayed, is a good, honest impression, and that every click-through is a good, honest click-through. We do this because when ads are shown, when a user taps on an ad, an advertiser gets charged for it. Somebody, somewhere, could be a big company, could be Aunt Betty's sweater shop for beautiful cats. Somebody has to write a check. And we need to be able to tell Aunt Betty that every ad impression she paid for was an honest chance for somebody to see her ad and that every click through came from someone who was genuinely interested in getting a sweater for Little Miss Whiskerson. So if you're ever in doubt about whether a particular layout or behavior is likely to conflict with ad mom policy, a great first step is to ask yourself, would it interfere with honest impressions or honest click throughs? And then put yourself in Aunt Betty's shoes. <coughs> exactly. So there's our serious moment. Now let's talk specifics. Let's start with an app like the one from our first episode, just a banner ad across the bottom. Perfect. This is a great layout used by a ton of apps. The banner's visible, it's not near any other controls, and there's lots of room for content. Plus, the user has plenty of opportunity to see the ad, and it's unlikely that they'll tap on it for any reason other than being interested. Excellent. But watch what happens when I add a button right down here. Those are really close. If you're going for the button, you might hit the ad by accident, especially if you're like me and you have these big stupid caveman hands. Uh, Gary, the last slice is fair game. Everyone knows this. So this layout runs the risk of a bad click-through. Someone accidentally tapping on the ad when they really want the button. It's a common problem, but it's easy to fix. You can just add a little space or move the button. Whatever you need to do to make sure the user isn't going to tap the ad accidentally. I've used buttons in this example, but the principle applies to any UI elements that accept input. Another issue we get questions about is whether it's okay to ask users to tap on ads, and it's not. For example, if I were to drop a UI label or a text view in here, I'm giving my users a reason to click the ad even if they're not interested, and every click-through costs money. That means Aunt Betty is going to end up paying for click-throughs by people who aren't interested in her cat sweaters. That's going to hurt her small business. All right. Let's get rid of that and add something else, a second ad. Whoa. In addition to crowding out content and annoying our user, we've also got bad impressions. With two ads on the screen at once, they have to split the spotlight, which isn't what our advertisers signed up for. The fix for this? Just stick with one banner. Ah, nice and simple. That's what I like. Hey, I eat an appropriate amount of pizza for an active person. As I think we all learned during off-site miniature golf team building day, this is an athlete, all right? This is what sports looks like. Moving on. Some types of content can also cause bad impressions. Displaying a banner while the user's actively playing an action game, for example. If I'm saving the world from the forces of evil, I'm probably too busy to consider an ad, even when I might be interested in it. Just move the ba banner to the menu or pause screen, or consider using interstitials between levels instead. Another good thing to avoid is loading banners that aren't on screen yet. This is a big reason why we recommend you don't place banners inside list views or other scrolling UI elements. Every time an ad mob banner is loaded, an impression is recorded for it, even if it's off screen or the user was scrolling so fast they couldn't see it. All right, so that's some stuff to avoid, but you might be wondering, what are some things I should do? What are the good practices? One of the best things you can do for your user experience is to keep in mind that ads should live alongside your content rather than being mixed in with it. Dedicate a spot for them in your layout, away from UI inputs and outside of scrolling content regions. Doesn't matter if it's at the bottom or the top. That way you can be fair to your advertisers and make sure you don't annoy our users by covering up content. 
Yes, thank you, Gary. That's a great example of how poor ad placement takes away from the user experience. Very funny. Seriously, you're going to body shame me in front of YouTube? What's next, an ad for the pudgy redhead dating network? Oh, you can go Hey, everybody. Sorry for blowing my top like that. Gary and I eventually patched things up, but it reminded me of one more thing I wanted to mention. There are types of content that shouldn't be included in any app that displays AdMob ads. Stuff like drug or tobacco references, racist hate speech, adult content, and so on. You can see this Help Center article for more information on prohibited content, and the one below it covers layouts and some of the other things we talked about. You might also like AdMob's No-Nonsense Guide to App Monetization. It's an overview of monetization strategies that includes code and tips from other engineers. As always, if you've got a technical question relating to anything you've just seen, stop by our support forum. And if you've got a question about this video series or an idea for something we could cover, leave a comment below and Gary and I will see you next time.